Hi there. In this short demo, we will run through how to build a small but fully functional simulation model. We'll use this model to run through all the core elements that Silica has to offer, and the model will represent the completion of an income generating project. After creating a new project, you'll see our model builder, which is what you see on the screen now. Before you start modeling anything, it's important to take the time settings under project, project settings, and then time here. Currently, our model runs in monthly increments and it does 60, 60 steps. So it runs for 60 months and that's five years. And that's what we want for this specific project. Once we're back in the model builder, we want to add variables and we do that by clicking right on our canvas and then we can add variables, flows and stocks, which are the three key types of variables that our simulation methodology offers. The first variable we create is a stock. A stock is anything that accumulates over time. A typical example are balance sheet positions, so that's the cash at hand. Accumulating means that by the end of the month, the, our stock will show the value it had at the beginning of the month, plus or minus any net change over the month. And these net changes are our second type of variables, which we call flows. In this case, that flow might just simply be a cash flow from our project. And we then connect the flow here directly to our stock. And what we can now do is, for example, if this represents pounds per month, because our model runs in monthly increments, and we set this to 10, you can see our stock increasing by units of 10 every month. It starts at zero, the next month it's 10, and then it's 20 and 30, and so on. Now, a first change that we might want to make is that our stock does not start at one. Rather, we want to add an auxiliary variable and we want to call that our initial investment. And this initial investment is 500,000. What we can then, we could toggle off this little chart, we can move the title of our, the name of our variable, and we can then connect this variable to the stock, just like we did with the flow. And to make our cash in hand essentially represent an initial outflow, we type in a minus sign and then autocomplete by clicking on initial investment. And now we can see our stock starts at minus 500,000. A second change we might want to make is to calculate dynamically the value of our stock depending on the project expenses and the income it generates. And to do that, we add another variable called expenses. And again, we connect it to our flow. And we add another one called income. And again, we connect it to our flow. And we want to create a structure where the project creates, requires some time to complete. So we add a third variable called project completion. In this case, we'll set it to six months and we connect it to our income. And we'll then add a custom function that is in our standard library called ramp. And the ramp function increases the income by in this case, let's say 5,000 pounds per month once the project is completed, which is the second argument in this function. And you can find all these functions documented under help and in our documentation. And what you can see on this graph now is that our income is zero for, the, and you see us in the data as well, for the first six time steps. And then it starts increasing from five to 10 to 15 by this increment of 5,000 pounds every month. Similarly, we assume our project as soon as we start it, even when it's not, not finished, accumulates cost of 30,000 per month. And then all we do is to combine these two variables at the cash flow is to override the initial 10 per month that we've put in and say it's the income less the expenses. Now that we have a fully functional, even though very small simulation model, what we want to do is experiment with it. And one way to do that are our is our scenario feature down here, where we can click the plus button add a scenario and rename it. For example, shorter completion time. And you can see they're color coded. So we have a base case in blue, where it's currently six months completion time. And we've got another case where it's all color coded in red. And we can click on our completion time variable and override this value of four. Again, you see the change is highlighted and the variable looks slightly different. And what this does is all our values in the model that depend on the completion time now automatically update so for example, our income is shifted forwards by two months because we finished the project earlier. And so is our project break even. So we sort of breaking even and crossing the zero line a bit early. 